And I thought, well, it's now or never. I mean, I was nearly 40. I'd better try and be an artist, I thought. So I chose Dunedin because I had friends here. And also it was very culturally um, informed. During that period, there was a huge amount of travelling artists in and out of town and lots of alternative venues happening. So it was a very exciting wee place and was so easy to live in. And of course the hinterland so beautiful. How could you not want to live here? I've just been on a trip from the Tiano office of Doc. We went up the Camelot River, which is hardly anybody accesses, and up to Bradshaw Arm, and up to very beautiful and remote places. And I like to view the fragile and remote places because they're really special. And you can feel the remoteness and you can feel the fragility at the same time. I also like the colour of the water. I mean, the doubtful sounds nearly has black water. I take a notebook about that big and I just draw in it because photographs don't actually show the whole dimension of a landscape. You know, they flatten out areas. So um, I've got thousands of photographs of flattened out areas. <laughs> and um, to be in the landscape like that, it's ever, ever changing. I was brought up in a landscape. I was brought up in the Eastern Boat Plenty and it was all water and beach and bush. And um, we were in the landscape all the time. And I used to draw it when I was a kid. And then up north, I became very um, interested in the whakapapa of landscape, and especially as I whakapapa to Napui. And I had um, the stories that were attached to the land. Suddenly the land became alive. And then, of course, had politics attached to it. Very much so in New Zealand, and that's never stopped. We were at a hotel, I think it was De Brett's in Auckland or somewhere, and suddenly all the lights went out and we couldn't see the food. And in came a waiter and a big tray and a huge conical pudding on it. And, and we thought, what's happening, what's happening? And of course there were sparklers all over it. And it was lit up and all the filings fell into the pudding and people were amazed and clapped. And uh, that was the start of it, really. I thought, how ridiculous. I couldn't eat that pudding. And it was an Aunt Daisy recipe called Naru Hoi Snow. And I thought, oh, I read it because my mother and my aunts were Aunt Daisy fans. She was their airwave friend, so I used to listen to her re religiously. So I looked at her prose and I thought, well, I'll, I think I'll write all the recipes in Aunt Daisy prose. There were things in it like the Clutha period, the damming of the Clutha and the lack of colonial archiving because they just rammed in the dam and didn't, you know, excavate for anything. And that there'd been a huge amount of um, pre-European plus colonial stuff that has never been dug up or looked at in that whole area. I was listening to the radio in my studio one day and Thea Muldoon uh, was on about Rob. And she said, oh, Rob's favorite pudding was apple crumble. So I turned my mining aunties into mining crumble. Now that work went to America and it toured from the Smithsonian and it, to it toured everywhere and it opened at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Now I got um, some wonderful letters 
from the States about it, like one woman wrote to me and said, fancy using bird, ground up bird bones in your recipe. We made some of them. Like we made the Rotorua stuff were full as earth and I'm afraid the Governor General's wife had a taste. I think she thought, might have thought it was chocolate. And we found, uh, Jim found a dead seal out on the coast and he put it in the pool by the um, gallery. So that caused a bit of consternation with the local arts council. And Jim, I can remember him saying very haughtily, don't you understand the principles of composting? That was very good. We were all running around defacing signs and putting up posters and bombing letterboxes and things like that. So that was a very active political thing for the, in the local sense. I'm really not naive to think that any of my work is going to in, uh, change the politics of anything, but I offer it up as um, a, a sort of an artistic protest, really, or a look at me or think about this.